Hi class and welcome to the first video for our next unit on cellular reproduction. So we just finished learning about cellular energy and how our cells get the energy and what they do with it. And so now I sort of want to ask, well now that our cells have this energy, what are they really going to do with this energy? Um, and the answer is sometimes they're going to make new cells. So an organism cells are constantly reproducing and making new and identical cells. This is happening inside of you all of the time. Your cells are taking in that glucose, they're making ATP, and they're using that ATP to make new cells. But you might be thinking, reproduce? How can a cell reproduce? I thought humans reproduced. How can a little tiny cell do that? Well, this type of reproduction I'm talking about is called asexual reproduction, meaning there's only one parent and the offspring, offspring simply means children, but we're going to use the term offspring. The offspring are identical to that one parent, and we call those offspring clones because they are identical to the parent. So here's a picture of a unicellular yeast. That's a unicellular organism. Uh, yeast is just something that we actually used to make bread. Um, and it's budding, so it's creating an offspring, a clone, another cell. It's reproducing another cell that is identical to that parent cell. And so this process, not exactly this budding process, but a similar process is happening inside of you right now. Your cells are needing to make new cells all of the time. So why do your cells need to make new cells? Well, in multicellular organisms like you, um, you do it to grow. So you're growing all the time. Also, when you were a little fertilized embryo, you had to use asexual reproduction to grow from a fertilized egg to an adult. And any time that you have any type of injury, uh, whether you see it or not, your cells use asexual reproduction to repair and replace cells. Now in unicellular organisms, it has a different function because unicellular organisms like that yeast I showed you and like bacteria or other prokaryotes, they use asexual reproduction to create an entirely new organism. No um, changes in the genetic information at all. Their offspring are clones of the parent. This process, and so important, this whole video is about this, mitosis. This process is called mitosis. Summarize asexual reproduction and its purposes. Anytime you have any injury, like this poor little puppy dog here, this uh, puppy is undergoing mitosis to repair and replace those arm cells. Growth from a fertilized embryo into a baby and from a baby into an adult. That baby is undergoing mitosis constantly. And unicellular organisms like this bacteria are undergoing asexual reproduction to make an entirely new organism, a brand new cell. It's identical, but it's still a new cell. So let's compare this asexual reproduction to sexual reproduction. So sexual reproduction, there are two parents, and the offspring are different. There, so there's a mixing up of the genetic information because there are two different parents, so the offspring are different. They're not clones. So the one purpose of sexual reproduction is to join an egg and a sperm and to create offspring. Now these eggs and these sperm are created through a process that is called meiosis. We're not going to talk about meiosis in this video, but we will in the next video. But don't confuse meiosis, which makes eggs and sperm, with mitosis. So let's take a closer look at asexual reproduction. It has two main parts, and they really make sense when you think about it. If we're going to make an entirely new cell, right, that's identical, we have to first copy all the DNA, all that genetic information, so that we can give the second copy to the new cell. Well, then we also have to do the same thing to all of the cellular contents, the cytoplasm and the organelles. So those are copied and they have to be given to the new cell as well. So this first part, the copying and the dividing of the DNA is called mitosis. And the second part, the copying and dividing of the uh, cell contents and cytoplasm is called cytokinesis. Now both of these, mitosis and cytokinesis, are part of the overall cell cycle, and the cell cycle has some other parts to it as well. So let's take a look at the cell cycle. I know this figure might be confusing, you have a similar figure in your book that might help you, but in orange where it says I, this is called interphase. Most of the time, the majority of the time, your cell is in interphase. Only a small amount of the time is your cell actually in the M phase, which is the mitotic phase. So the mitotic phase includes both those parts I just mentioned, mitosis, so dividing the DNA and the nucleus, and cytokinesis, dividing of the cytoplasm and the cell contents. 
So that's only happening a very short amount of the time. The other part of the time during interphase, your cell is just going about its everyday life, cell metabolism, and this is really important, this is where the DNA gets replicated. Mitosis is simply where it gets divided, but during interphase, specifically during S phase, this is where the DNA gets duplicated or replicated. So this is happening, we're taking one molecule of DNA and we're making two, that's happening in the S phase of interphase. So let's take a look at mitosis, that mitotic phase. First, before the DNA can be divided, it's got to be duplicated. we got to have two copies. When does that occur? Right, the S phase of interphase. Then the DNA is going to condense into chromosomes. Because remember, um, from when we learned about in the cell, we've got chromatin, right? Inside the nucleus, we've got chromatin, which is this loose ball of DNA. It's very messy. So we have to have this DNA condense into these nice chromosomes so that they can eventually line up next to each other and then separate into, those, into the new cell and the old cell. So here we've got loose DNA like chromatin and it has to condense into nice chromosome structures. Four distinct phases of prophase that we're going to look at. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Easier to remember, um, PMAT if you will. Now before we look at all four of these phases, let's do some basic terminology. I know this is a boring slide, I'm going to show you a picture of this here in a second. But chromatin, remember from the cell video, it's that loose ball of yarn of DNA and protein. And this is what the DNA looks like in interphase. Then it condenses into chromosomes, and we start to see chromosomes in prophase. Now sister chromatins are like chromosomes, but sister chromatids are actually identical arms of a duplicated chromosome. So remember that DNA has to duplicate, right, in S phase? Well, once it starts to condense, it's actually going to condense into two sister chromatids, uh, but they're identical. And then the centromere is what holds the chromatids together. So let's take a picture, uh, look at this picture. So chromatin, loose ball of DNA, this is what it looks like in interphase. It duplicates, it duplicates in S phase. And then when, what we actually start to see in prophase are these sister chromatids. Uh, this is a single chromosome, this is a sister chromatid, a duplicated chromosome. Single chromosome, it duplicates, and we have a sister chromatid. And what's holding it together is the centromere. Chromatin, chromosome, chromatid. Hopefully you got that straight. All right, mitotic phases. First is P, prophase. So here we have our nucleus. This is our uh, chromatin that is starting to condense. So that's really the main thing that's happening in prophase. The, sister, or the chromatin is condensing into sister chromatids. Um, also, the nuclear envelope is starting to break apart. Second, metaphase. The sister chromatids are lining up at this metaphase plate. They're preparing to separate from one another. But remember, each arm is identical to the opposite arm because they're just simply a duplicated chromosome. And next, anaphase. So the sister chromatids are pulled apart. So again, this guy here is identical to this guy. Okay, That's why when you have offspring during mitosis, that new cell is identical or a clone of that original cell. So these chromatids are pulled to opposite sides of the cell. And the last phase of mitosis is telophase. So the chromosomes are unwinding back into chromatin. Cytokinesis has already started to begun in telophase. There's an overlap there. And this pinched region here is called a cleavage furrow. In the animal cells, that is called a cleavage furrow. So it just pinches in, pinches in all the way, eventually, until it pinches into two whole new cells. Now, in plant cells, it's a little bit different. So cytokinesis in animal cells, we have this cleavage furrow pinching the cells apart. In plant cells, however, we have something called a cell plate. And this cell plate is actually derived from the cell wall. So instead of pinching in, it's actually going outward. The cell plate is coming in from, it starts in the inside and it grows outward until it divides the cell into two. So what happens after cytokinesis? I want you to think about that for one second. What do you think? We have our two new daughter cells, right? What do they need to do? They need to go about their everyday metabolism. They enter interphase, and then they're going to replicate their DNA, and then they're going to go back into mitosis and make another cell. So here's the overall picture of what mitosis looks like. In interphase, we have DNA replication, so now we have two sister chromatids. Uh, the sister chromatids line up during metaphase. They're pulled apart during anaphase, 
and then we've got cytokinesis making two brand new cells. In the lab, we're going to take a look at some microscope slides of actual cells. These are plant cells. You can tell because of their nice, rigid cell wall. And we're going to maybe even count how many cells we see in the different phases. Most of the cells you're looking at right now are, in fact, an interphase. Um, so, for example, this one would be an interphase. Let's see if we can find one in metaphase. I'm not seeing one in metaphase. Um, here's metaphase. Here's metaphase. And here's anaphase. They're being pulled apart. And here we see two nuclei, so we're starting to see cytokinesis happen here. All right, to finish this video, I would like for you to answer these four questions, and we'll talk about them in class.